The first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. Oh, the humanity! The fires of frustration and discord are burning. In Let us city. not forget for a moment the toils and efforts that lie ahead. They say that those who forget their history are condemned to repeat it. This is the History Lessons Podcast with certified financial planning practitioner Patrick Huey, author of History Lessons for the Modern Investor and your guide to financial wisdom in the past, present, and future. You ready? Good. Let's get historical. Historical? Oh, 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 oh yeah. This is the History Lessons Podcast for the week of December the 4th, 2023. I'm still Patrick Huey, author of History Lessons for the Modern Investor. And if you're a modern investor seeking some historical perspective, once again, friends, you are in the right place. This week, we'll be talking about gift wrapping, marble towers, and Shakespearean soliloquies. But first, the news. Well, yeah, welcome to the most wonderful time of the year, unless, of course, you're the U.S. manufacturing sector. Let's unwrap this week's data together, shall we? First, pop the New Year's champagne early, because GDP growth rallied 5.2% in Q3, right? Meh, not so much. GDP was revised upward as part of the Bureau of Economic Analysis and their continued reindeer games of estimating GDP without the full data set. A decent number was already baked into markets, so this really doesn't change all that much. Personal incomes rose a modest 0.2% in October. Dividends and interest led the charge, while private sector wages rose 0.1%. Oh, but we've got spending. Consumer spending rose 0.2%, a slight increase cushioned by services, while goods took a bit of a tumble. And it looks like the holidays are a go for this year. No need to cancel Santa's sleigh. The ISM Manufacturing Index remains stuck at 46.7, deep in contraction territory for the 13th straight month. 13 months of contraction? Well, that's quite a commitment and not the kind you want. Apparently, Santa's workshop is the only one ramping up for the end of the year. Not great, but nothing new there either. Just remember, when the going gets tough, the tough go online shopping. Speaking of nothing new, PCE prices, the Fed's preferred inflation measure, were unchanged. Core inflation, well, that's up 3.5% from last year, and there's even a super core version, excluding the kitchen sink, well, excluding everything but services. It's dropped from the previous year's peak, but it's still high enough to make you consider wrapping your presents in money to save on gift wrap. Next up, we'll charge the Wayback Machine and head back in time for this week's history lesson. First, this word. Interest rates are rising, and your annuity, purchased in the last decade, might not be keeping up, which means your financial plan may be falling behind. So if you own a deferred annuity, fixed, indexed, or variable worth more than $250,000, now is the time to review it and make sure it is doing all that it can for you and your financial plan. Let us help you keep your retirement on track. Introducing Victory Independent Planning. VIP turns complex financial matters into clear and confident solutions. So you can relax and enjoy retirement whenever it arrives. Get the annuity review kit now. This complimentary kit includes a variety of checklists, resources, and ebooks to review the fees, features, and flexibility, or lack thereof, in your current annuity contract. It will even help you assess your overall investment goals and the people who are offering you advice. Get the kit today, because you can't teach an old annuity new tricks. To learn how VIP can help you review your annuity, click on the link in the show notes, or go to victoryindependentplanning.com. That's victoryindependentplanning.com. Sign up for peace of mind today. Alexa. Charge the Wayback Machine and set it for 1884 A.D. Charging Wayback Machine. On December the 6th, 1884, the marble, granite, and bluestone Knights Monument to George Washington was completed on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. At the time, it was the tallest structure in the world. At its dedication, it measured 554 feet, 7 and 11 32nd inches. 
and was only overtaken by the Eiffel Tower five years later. Today, it remains the world's tallest obelisk. Not a bad tribute to an obscure Virginian planter whose rise to prominence was far from cast in stone. And yet, it remains hard to believe that 138 years ago, that was the tallest structure in the world for five years. In the ensuing century and a half, give or take, humankind has continually pushed itself onward and upward. No, seriously. You know, it doesn't seem like we've made much progress sometimes, especially when we're enmeshed in the 24-hour news cycle. But honestly, what does history tell us? Well, here are a few ideas to ponder when swimming in the infinity pools of information that reinforce, not challenge, your biases. Number one, extreme poverty is on the wane around the globe. In 1820, virtually 95% of the world lived in extreme poverty. While today, we've almost flipped those numbers. And that's quite a change in, in a relatively short period of time when you consider that the previous 6,000 years of recorded history barely made a dent in those statistics. Indeed, the fastest growing class worldwide is the middle class, which didn't even exist until the medieval period when plagues made labor so scarce that workers were able to demand higher wages. Number two, despite a number of global conflicts, Ukraine and Gaza being the most cited, we live in a relatively peaceful time in history. According to author Steven Pinker, during the times of Genghis Khan, over 11% of the Earth's population was killed in battle. 11%. A similar death toll percentage today would yield 792 million casualties. By comparison, less than 0.01% of the world's population today has perished in conflicts of the 21st century. Now, of course, nobody wants to be part of that 0.01%, but the numbers simply pale in comparison to the incredibly violent world of the past. Sure, I hope we do better. It is the holiday season after all. But why do we always assume that such progress is fleeting, even if it's been happening for centuries? What if, just what if, we keep reaching for the skies? Only history is written in stone. Wayback Machine Disengaged, returning to the year 2023. Finally this week, it's on to the mailbag. You've got mail. This message came from me from Christina, who asked, Hey, I heard you're doing some acting, actually acting in Shakespeare this weekend. Any lessons learned from the bard and or his soliloquies? Of course, there's a ton to learn from the Bard as an investor. Indeed, like the Bible, you can find arguments for or against just about anything using Shakespeare's work. And to set the record straight, if you're in South Florida this weekend, I'm co-starring in the complete works of William Shakespeare, Abridged, a farcical comedy somewhat loosely based on Shakespeare's plays. But for investors, I'm thinking this week of a speech from Henry V. As he approached the gates of Enfleur with his army, and they're about to... Uh, to break through, a lot of the soldiers are holding back in fear after wave after wave of other attacks have failed. And Harry, the king, jumps up and makes this speech. <clears throat> once more into the breach, dear friends, once more. Or close the wall up with our English dead. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, conjure up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard favored rage, then lend the eye a terrible aspect. Now set the teeth and stretch the nostril wide, hold hard the breath and bend up every spirit to his full height. On, on, you noblest English, whose blood is fet from fathers of war proof, fathers that, like so many Alexanders, have in these parts, from morn till even, fought and sheathed their swords for lack of argument. Dishonor not your mothers. Now attest that those whom you called fathers did beget you, be copying out a men of grosser blood and teach them how to war. And you, good yeoman, whose limbs were made in England, show us here the metal of your pasture. Let us swear that you are worth your breeding, which I doubt not, for there's none of you so mean and base that had not, lo not noble luster in your eyes." I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start. The game's afoot. Follow your spirit, and upon this charge, cry, God for Harry, England, and St. George. 
Wonderful stuff for sure. And from time to time, don't all investors feel like they are piling into the breach, risking more than they want for whatever gains might lie on the other side? And yet, Henry's words are the exact antithesis of how investors need to approach their business. Imitating the tiger, setting the teeth, and stretching the nostril are all lizard-brained emotional responses to outside stimulus. They're designed to make thought and reason superfluous. Just act. Just go. Once more into the breach. Once more. Now, shortcuts to thinking are bad for all of us, not just investors. Modesty? Stillness? Humility? Yes, please. Even though they are much harder to achieve now than in the Bard's own time. Aye, there's the rub. Well, my fellow historians, that's all for this week. Check out my book, History Lessons for the Modern Investor. That's still available on Amazon.com. And be sure to do all the social stuff for me. Like this episode. Follow me wherever you see or hear the, your podcasts. I'm available on Substack, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and even YouTube. Until next week, when we'll take another rollicking romp through the past and make an investment in your future with history lessons for the modern investor. See you next week. <laughs>